Planting the Garden, Varieties of Vegetables Recommended for Alabama. So how to choose the best variety? There are so many choices and there are other PowerPoints that you may want to check out in this section. But to give you a general information of which varieties we recommend throughout Alabama, this presentation will give you some that are tried and true um, and known to do well throughout the state. Every year there are new, maybe bigger and better varieties that are constantly being developed. Uh, but always stick with those proven recommended varieties if you're doing major plantings um, and maybe just try some new to the market varieties on a small scale to determine how well they do in the area in that you live. So here I'm just going to go through different varieties um, that are recommended of different crops in Alabama. And as you'll see, these are all cabbage family varieties. So these are all related to each other. And one way to have success in the garden is to make sure that you rotate in your garden um, where you don't plant the same family in the same spot. So where you planted broccoli last year, you would not want to plant something like cabbage the next as they are susceptible to the same diseases and even insects in the garden. So for more success, it's recommended that you rotate um, to a different family in that spot. That's where a garden journal is really going to come in to be handy as uh, you'll forget what you planted from one year to the next. So keeping that garden journal um, of where you planted what as well as what variety you planted and make notes of successes or losses that you had of one variety over the next so that um, you can continue to improve upon your success from year after year. Again, these are um, relatives in the garden, beet, carrots, and radishes, and these are recommended varieties that do well um, really as root crops in the state and links at the end will also send you more information as to timing of when it is uh, best to plant these different uh, plants in the garden uh, as well as plant spacing and how to thin things like that to take into consideration with these varieties. Collards and kale are two plants I really do recommend especially new beginners try as they don't tend to have as many problems other than uh, some insects, maybe some worms eating the uh, foliage, but um, easy, pretty easy plants to grow and here are some recommended varieties. Cucurbits, now these are not easy to grow. They have lots of insect and disease issues and uh, as you can see here, even what your intended use for the plant, whether you want to make pickles um, with the cucumbers or if you're going to use the cucumbers for salad, a lot of that determines which variety that you should choose um, when you decide how to plant them in the garden. Also, if you're going to trellis the plant or if it's going to be growing along the ground, there's different varieties that you would want to plant based on the uh, intended use of the plant or the space that you have available in your plant, in your uh, your garden space. Okra. Okra is definitely a southern plant and does really well in Alabama and there are many different varieties available. Again, you want to make sure you pick early. The longer you let the, the plants, um, the fruit har uh, go to harvest, the tougher the okra will be. So you'll have to stay on this one. Once it begins to produce, you'll be picking almost every day to ensure that you don't have tough uh, okra at harvest. So these are tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants, and they are all related to each other. So again, back to rotating. You want to make sure that you rotate in the garden to reduce disease and insect susceptibility to these plants who have common a lot of common problems in the garden. So 
Um, if you planted a tomato there last year, don't plant a pepper the next. You want to rotate to something outside of the same family to reduce uh, disease and insect pressure. Here are lettuce varieties and it's a lot of fun to grow lettuce in the garden and easy to do but it is a low value crop so if you're limited on space you may decide to go with something um, other than lettuce and leave the lettuce growing to those in the supermarket but there's lots of fun varieties and I think they're a beautiful plant to have in the garden in the early spring or the late winter um, so give it a try, but again, this is a more of a low value crop that takes up a good bit of space that you may decide uh, would be better off to uh, purchase and use the space available for things like kale or um, collards or uh, things that will, broccoli that will give you a good yield and um, are a little more high, high value crop. Pea varieties, there's black eyed peas, pink eyed peas, crowder peas, but and they all also may come in different varieties such as those that grow more um, as a bush style or require a trellising system. So things to consider when you choose your bean and pea varieties. Onions, uh, there are short day onions and long day onions and green bunching onions. So you want to be sure that you know what kind of onion you're growing when you invest that space in the garden as it will be there for a while before, especially if you're growing a bulb onion, before you can harvest those big bulbed onions. Um, green onions, they're going to grow quickly in the bunching onions, so um, you can you know, move them out of the soil and bring in um, a different crop, but remember that you're kind of dedicating that spot there for a while for those bulb type onions. Again, here's the bean. Um, like the pea, there's um, different kind that will, um, some need trellising and some are more of a bush type. So uh, take that into consideration when you're selecting the varieties. Also, you have small seeded um, versus large seeded. So that also uh, is something to take into consideration. Mustard, spinach, turnips, these are all easy, especially mustard um, and turnip, turnip greens are easy to establish in the garden and um, give a, a lot of yield and continue to come back um, if you just harvest the tops so uh, and the spinach as well so these are good varieties to put in your garden um, things to consider when you're selecting varieties would even be um, bolting bolting means that it's the temperatures have gotten too hot and it'll start to go to flower and then to seed so once that happens your plants are finished and you'll pull them out um, and wait until the temperatures are right to replant. So um, those that are that don't bolt as quickly or as fast um, would be ones to consider, especially if you're planting a summer crop that are going to go, um, I mean a spring crop that are going into summer, you would want ones that don't bolt as easily because of um, the possibility of temperatures warming up. Asparagus is a fun plant, but also one that you want to establish an area for um, as it can stay in that garden area for 10, 15, 20 or more years. So it's not a plant you're going to pull up and replant that area with something else the next year. It's definitely a dedicated space and a garden that you um, will have for years and years to come. Potatoes, like the Irish potatoes, are um, there are many different varieties now on the market that even come in some really fun, crazy colors. So that's something to consider if you want purple or red. Um, even Irish potatoes, those varieties um, play into that as well as like some scab resistant varieties. But um, and also I get the question often on planting times. Do you plant 
regular Irish potatoes at the same time as sweet potatoes and that is um, not the case. You plant more of the Irish potatoes um, around the middle of February and harvest in May where sweet potatoes are definitely a midsummer um, planting and harvest around September. So they definitely have different seasons um, to dedicate that garden space to. Sweet corn, um, there's lots of things to consider when you're planting corn and so here are some recommended varieties um, and even some that produce that are better for early season, mid season, and late season. And again here are great uh, publications that are available through our website at aces.edu um, for more specific garden crop questions. There, this is definitely a wealth of resource information. Also check out our free garden apps. We have SO and the Farming Basics. They're both free through the Alabama Cooperative Extension um, through your app store on your phone or tablet and they have recommended varieties that do well all across Alabama as well as disease resistant and um, insect uh, common problems and diseases that affect each crop. And if you have further gardening questions, you can always call our Master Gardener Helpline. It's toll free and it's 1-877-252-4769 or 1-877-ALLA-GROW.